The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being with us each and every single week. As always, if you want to get involved in the show, no problem, you can email us. The email address is feedback at ami.ca. You can send us anything, comments, criticism, suggestions for future episodes. We want to hear it. Feedback at ami.ca. If you're not already following us on social media, you're going to want to look up Double Tap Canada on Twitter. And if you want to you know, tweet to us, use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Because every couple months, we go through all our emails and say, okay, which ones should we feature on the show? Of course, we answer every Everything, but we will feature some on the show. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott. He in Glasgow, Scotland. I in Montreal, Canada. This week we're doing something a little special. We are celebrating International Women's Day, Stephen. And I really, you know, you and I were talking off air, trying to figure out how do we how do we bring up the subject, um, not being women. I think the the best way is to do that with a, a, a you know quite being quite honest, which is you know the tech field, the tech world has always been a very male driven field. So for you and I to come on and pretend that we have any idea what it might be like for a woman to come up in this world would be preposterous. I mean, we can't even pretend to to, to, to guess what it might have been like. Absolutely, Mark. And you know, this isn't just unique to the tech industry, although it is very prevalent in the tech industry. But you know, we see this across the world. We see this across every industry where women are fighting to be heard, fighting to be part of it. And, you know, I'm really pleased to say that we're able to talk about this today. Uh, you know, as two white guys, what else can we do but just put it out there and say, look, we, we, we don't know the answer to this, but we're going to hear from people today who can give us the answers and also give encouragement to people who are up and coming in this world uh, to encourage other women, other girls to take part in the industries that they want to be involved in. Because why, why wouldn't we want more voices, more people to share their stories, their experiences? It helps all of us be better people it helps the products be better well listen you know I, I can't imagine or i think back to all the campaigns that some of the big tech companies are doing to try to get you know kids into tech into stem into science and technology and there's a whole movement to also get young girls into it too and, and i think it is changing the landscape is changing and we're getting everybody interested in the tech field and that's super important because Everybody has something to contribute when it comes to science and technology, no matter what the field is, whether it's, you know, electrical engineering, whether it's in computer sciences, whether it's in, you know, by, no matter what it is, you know, everybody has something great to give. So why not open it up to the entire world and why not give everybody an equal opportunity here? And, and you and I are going to approach this in a, a, a little bit differently today because the way we're doing this and the way we're celebrating women in tech is by introducing you guys at home to two incredible women this week. Um, you know, and I think we should, you know, before we even bring them on, because they are standing by, uh, let's talk about how we know these people. Because Haven Gurma, for example, is, you know, deaf blind. She graduated Harvard Law School. She's been working with some of the biggest names in tech, which is how we got to know her in terms of the tech field. What was your experience like? How did you first hear about her, Haben? You know, it's interesting. I met Haben uh, back in 2019. And remember those days when you could actually meet people, Mark? It was a really great time, quite frankly. Yes, I do. Uh, and, you know, it was a time when I was was able to visit TechShare Pro in London, England. I got the chance to meet Haben there. And, you know, I'm not one of those people who throw the word inspiration around. I don't like when people do that. You know, oh, I'm an inspiration because I put clothes on and got to work today. That's not the case with Haben. Haben's story is incredible. Someone who's deaf blind, someone who's a woman, someone, a woman of color, who's had to fight her way to graduate to Harvard Law University and become a lawyer as a result of it. You know, an incredible story that Haben has told. And you know what I love about what Haben's done is she's now turning around and helping other people. She's encouraging others to you know, forge that path. She's done it in some ways and she wants others to continue it. And it is still like forging a path ahead because you still face today the same discrimination, the same challenges. So it's really, really important that the work Haben does encourages other women who are disabled, who are women of color, uh, who are women to stand up 
and have their voices heard and follow their dreams. And you know, the other woman that's going to be joining us today, her name is Janet Gillespie, and she is the Vice President of Marketing for Panasonic Canada. Now, this is a woman that I met years and years ago, uh, years and years ago, uh, when I worked at XM Canada, and she was the Director of Marketing at the time. An incredibly strong and powerful woman. She began her career in computer sciences in the early 80s. She was working in the IT department, and someone came in, and uh, she's going to tell the story after, so excuse me for, you know, stealing her thunder here, but someone dropped a computer in her, in her lap and said, here, figure this thing out. And that's when she got into the tech field. And she's moved on to some incredible companies, and she'll talk about that when we have her on a bit later. But she's a co quite an incredible woman, and she works with one of the biggest electronics brands in the world right now. Panasonic has been making not only consumer electronics, but, uh, you know, I mean, they've been making incredible devices. I remember this once sought-after wireless phone. I'm not talking about cellular here. I'm talking about just a cordless phone. And I don't know why I remember this, Stephen, but it was the KXT4000. It was this flip. I know, I remember the actual model of this phone. I remember being in Florida and hunting down this phone. And it was like $300. It had the base, but it had a, a flip-style phone before, before cell phones even existed. And I had to have this. And I did find it, and I did get it. And Panasonic is the company that made that. Now, they've moved away from a lot of the consumer facing products. They're still there in, you know, photography, but when it comes to TVs, they're not really making TVs anymore. Uh, when it comes to other products, they're really focusing on the B2B side of things. So she's gonna tell us her story and she is standing by as well. But Stephen, we gotta take a break. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna start with Habin. We're gonna talk about her story and get her on next year on Double Tap TV. So you guys at home, again, if you want to get involved, feedback at ami.ca is the email address. Of course, follow us on social media. It is at Double Tap Canada on Twitter and use the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions, a lot of comments and feedback. After this show, we are celebrating International Women's Day here on Double Tap TV. Stick around. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being with us celebrating International Women's Day. Again, get involved. Feedback at ami.ca, our email address on social media. It is at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott. Stephen, we're celebrating International Women's Day by introducing you guys at home to some incredible women in the tech space, and our next guest will definitely fit that bill. Absolutely, and our first guest, as you say, absolutely fits that bill. Habin Gurma is a deafblind woman. Uh, she fought against all kinds of obstacles and challenges to graduate from Harvard Law School and uh, go on to be a lawyer. She now campaigns and advocates for disabled people all around the world. And she joins us here on Double Tap TV. Haben, it's great to be back with you here on Double Tap TV. Thank you for being here. You're very welcome. This is Haben speaking. I'm glad to be here. Haben, your life has been quite an incredible journey, one which you documented in a fantastic new book. Now, for those who, who are meeting you for the first time here, can you do the difficult job of trying to condense your story into a couple sentences? Because it's it's been quite an incredible one. My book is called Haben, the Deaf Blind Woman Who Conquered Harvard Law. People have been saying to me for a long time, wow, you overcame your disability, deaf blindness, to go to Harvard Law School. That is not true. I'm still disabled. I'm still deaf blind. It was Harvard that had to overcome years of sexism and racism and ableism to work toward inclusion. And they still have more work to do, as does the rest of society. So I use my personal stories to highlight what the problems are in our society. The main one is ableism, the systemic oppression of disabled people, assumptions, policies that treat disabled people as inferior to non-disabled people. This comes up in tech all the time, where tech is designed for just one kind of person, usually non-disabled person, rather than thinking about all the different ways we're human. So my book captures a lot of that. How did I get to Harvard Law School? What are the tools and strategies? How did society change so that more disabled people can pursue education, whether that's in law, 
or in other fields. And that's the amazing part of the story, right? Is that, you know, it is possible to achieve great things. I mean, I know from my own experience, Haben, you've talked about it as well. You know, when you're growing up, people put limitations on you. They tell you there's only so much you can achieve. But I guess the question is, how much of it is about pushing back against those attitudes? So therefore, how much of you do you have to put into it in order to be successful? I, I guess quite a lot, right? Because that's how I feel about it. But you know, how much of it is you? Uh, how much responsibility should we take? The biggest barrier is ableism. It's society is deciding, you know what? We don't want blind kids in this school. Send them to a special school. It's employers saying, you know, we can't have blind people doing this job. Deaf people can't do this job. Ableism, that is the biggest problem. If I had grown up in another community in the United States, another part of California, different state, it wouldn't have mattered how hard I worked because of ableism, because teachers wouldn't provide braille, employers wouldn't hire a disabled person. A lot of disabled people are already working hard. Stop telling us to work hard. We're already working hard. It's employers and schools and government programs that need to change and address ableism. Do you feel that there's ableism in the tech industry? Oh, of course there's ableism in tech. So tech is created with the assumptions and biases of the creators of the tech. So all those biases, including ableism, are being built into the tech. So devices, cars, space shuttles, where the ideal person is always assumed to be non-disabled. It feels ridiculous in 2022 that we still have to have the conversation around what a disabled person thinks or feels on any given topic, uh, especially in this conversation, but I guess in any part of our lives. How do we change that? What do we do? So conversations like this one help change the culture and create more awareness and litigation government enforcement also helps create change. So we need a combination of all these things to create change. Having tech can be used in so many different ways. You know, it can enable, it can disable at times. In our conversation, we talk about how it empowers people, but it sounds like the way you're saying it and the way you're describing it is, is it's somewhat disabling people. Is that right? Tech can be enabling or disabling depending on how it's created. So if something is designed with access in mind, it's going to empower people. If something is not designed with the disabled people in mind, it's going to create barriers for us and leave us further behind. So it really depends on how it's being created. That is so well said, Haben. It's a question about you personally though. How has technology enabled you personally? So there is tech that has made my life worse and brought more barriers into my life. And there's tech that has made my life easier and brought improvements to my life. So it's, it's a very, very broad question. And I want to emphasize that it's really important for those developing tech to have disabled people in mind design with accessibility. Even if you're just doing an update, design with accessibility and make sure all content, all services is fully accessible. Definitely. Haben Gurma, thank you so much for coming on to Double Tap TV this week. You're very welcome. Thank you for allowing me to share about my work. That is Haben Gurma here on Double Tap TV. Guys, stick around when we come back. We've got someone whose entire career spans the Canadian tech industry, and that starts from the early 80s. This is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Marco Flalo. We'll be back in a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Celebrating International Women's Day today by telling you some amazing stories for some amazing people and women in tech. Welcome back to Double Tap TV with myself, Marco Flalo, and Stephen Scott. Stephen, you know, I, I actually hate days like today that shine a spotlight on really anything, really. Why is that, Mark? 
Well, Stephen, I'm glad you asked. You know, it's because every day, honestly, should be a celebration of everything, whether that's women in tech, you know, teachers in our schools, doctors and nurses in hospitals. We shine these national days of this and international day of that, which in reality, it should be every day. It's kind of like birthdays. I feel like you should be celebrating the fact that you're alive every single day of the year, not just one day. But, but here we are celebrating International Women's Day. That's very deep, Mark. Very, very deep. Well done. Our next guest is the Vice President of Marketing and Brand Management for Panasonic Canada. She joined the executive team at Panasonic, Stephen, in 2013 after spending time consulting in business and marketing strategy for some really big brands in this country. She was the vice president of marketing for XM Canada, which is where I met her. She spent years working at Palm Canada. Remember the Palm oh, Pilot? Yeah. And, and before that, she was, uh, you know, at NEC Computers, Tandem Computers. And, and why is all this important? Why do I give this whole long list of where she's worked? Because, Janet, hopefully this adequately establishes you as a true leader when it comes to great, successful women in Canadian tech. Janet Gillespie, thank you for being with us this week on Double Tap TV. Wonderful to be with you. It's uh, been a long time since I've connected with you and happy to be here with, here with you today. Well, Janet, it's definitely fun to have you on, especially talking about women in tech. You know, I instantly thought of you because of our experience and of course our history together working at XM. Now, you know, talk to our audience, tell them about your experience because you've been in the tech sector pretty much your entire, you know, entire career. Where did that interest start? Was it actually, <laughs> what was it that actually got you into this world? Oh, that's an interesting story. So I, uh, I actually um, went to uh, Humber College and took a business administration program. So I was taking sort of a broad approach, wasn't sure what I wanted to get into in life. And my first job was working actually for a mining company uh, called Denison Mines. And I worked in their IT department and I did uh, user training and documentation. And one day my boss at the time uh, dropped a box on my desk and I opened it up and it was an IBM PC. And he said, figure out what these things are gonna do because we're gonna implement them across the country, company. And so there I was, there was no courses or anything. It was early days of PCs. And so I scoured through the manuals, figured out what they did and uh, began a, uh, a rollout uh, across the uh, organization and did all of the user training on uh, WordPerfect at the time and Lotus123 at the time. Uh, across finance teams and, uh, you know, secretarial pools and so forth. And that was back in the 80s. So that was sort of my first interest in getting into sort of the tech world. And from there, I uh, traversed into marketing very quickly. So the, the combo has uh, served me well. And uh, I pretty much held uh, tech marketing positions in all of the roles through my career. Now, not to date anyone here, but you know, you talked about the first IBM and, and WordPerfect and all of that. What was it like being in the IT room at that time? Did it feel like there was a stigma with you being there as a woman? Yeah, funnily enough, yeah, I was, um, you know, the one of the only female uh, females in the uh, Denison Mines IT department. It was full of uh, programmers, mostly men, uh, and all sitting at keyboards, you know typing away and programming. And so it, it was very different for me to be part of that very male centric group at the very beginning, but uh, they were they were fantastic. They always, I was always peeking over their shoulder, figuring out what they were doing. And uh, they were the ones who really taught me uh, because I was trying to translate uh, what they were developing into meaningful user documentation and training. So. You know, I, I lived in a group of men, but, uh, you know, it was uh, they were tremendous mentors to me and in, in getting me to really understand that tech side. Janet, let's talk about the industry as a whole for a second. And I think we've come a long way, but have quite a long way to go. But, but being in the heart of it, you can give us the best perspective here. Was it just perception that it was a male dominated field or was tech really, you know, male dominated? Was that a reality? No, I, I think it was a very much a reality uh, uh, in one period of time, but I, I definitely believe that is that is um, transition substantially. I mean, I look at I look at Panasonic. You, you, you take a company like Panasonic; it's a hundred plus year old company, um, headquartered out of Japan. So culturally, I'm very male centric. Uh, culture. Um, when I joined the company, it was definitely an executive team that was mostly male dominated. I think we had two females on the on the exec team. And the two typical ones are marketing and HR, <laughs> of course. And uh, now when I look at our, our uh, executive team today, five out of nine are women. 
which is uh, just tremendous. Um, yeah, so we have representation from marketing, HR, legal, sales, and our head of IT is also female. Now, before we let you go, Janet, I just want to ask you, what advice would you give to a young woman watching this today who wants to get into the tech industry? What advice would you offer? Yeah, I, you know, I, I always believe um, attitude and aptitude is number one. Skills uh, can be learned and it's a never ending learning of skills, uh, no matter what you're doing. Technical skills, um, you know, business skills, etc. So, you know, just have that openness, be flexible, um, you know, grow your knowledge, um, you know, be honest and candid at all times, uh, find yourself a really, really good mentor. Uh, that's always uh, a good thing to have, somebody who's really going to help um, guide you and, um, you know, help you network and grow within your your own personal um, growth areas, um, find new paths within the organization um, to connect and make some changes. So. That would be my my overall guidance. Janet Gillespie, thank you so much for joining us this week on Double Tap TV. Wonderful, Mark. Great to connect with you again, and thank you very much for having me on. Stephen, what a what a fun conversation this week. Obviously, celebrating International Women's Day with only two of the incredible women that we know in tech, but there are millions out there, and uh, hopefully millions more that are coming up in this field that are getting interested in science and technology that will uh, hopefully be uh, interview subjects of ours down the road. Absolutely. I mean, why not? Why would you not want more voices? Why would you not want more perspectives? And that's what, when you include people in industry and up the chain, you know, from customer right through to CEO and all of that, when you include more people, you get different perspectives, you get better products. And uh, that is clear and evident today. You guys at home, thank you so much for being with us this week and each and every single week. Again, if you want to get involved, just send us an email. It's feedback at ami.ca or reach out on social media at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. On behalf of our two guests, Janet Gillespie and Haben Gurma, and Stephen Scott, I am Marka Flalo. Thank you for being with us this week on Double Tap TV. Hosted by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing Jordan Steves and Marka Flalo. Voiceover Anna Vicino. Integrated Described Video Specialist Ron Rickford. Coordinating Producer Jennifer Johnson. Director Production Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2022, Accessible Media, Inc.